Hello, welcome. My name is Raina McKay. I'm a GU medical oncologist at the University of California in San Diego, and we're here with GU Oncology Now at ASCO 2023. So excited to be here. Hi everyone, so I'm Chung Han Lee. I'm a medical oncologist at Memorial Stone Kettering Cancer Center. Uh, you know, excited to join everyone. So great to have you here with us today, Joe. A um, lot of exciting data getting presented and mm -hmm. had your study B61 get presented on uh, treatment options in non-clear cell RCC. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where we are with non-clear yeah. cell RCC? Yeah, of course. I mean, as you know, like, you know, non-clear cell is like a very diverse subset of, of kidney cancer in which, you know, the most dominant type is clear cell kidney cancer. Historically speaking, in the past, we've always had relatively poor responses to the various therapies. So we really designed a phase two multi-center international clinical trial looking at the effectiveness of a TKIO combination in this setting, namely for this trial, the combination of lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab. Um, and then kind of open to all different types of histologies, uh, really only excluding medullary and collecting duct. Wonderful. And how does this trial fit into mm. the existing landscape? Like, mm. what else is out there yeah. right now for non-clear cell RCC? Yeah, so as you know from the NCC gui guidelines, like, you know, the preferred regimen is clinical trial, and then following that is, you know, sunitinib and then capazantinib based off the PET-MET trial. Um, you know, there are some other data looking at TKIO combinations, but this is probably going to be our largest trial investigating this type of uh, regimen. So tell us what you found. What was the primary endpoint yeah. for the trial and, and what were the who were the patients that were enrolled? Yeah, yeah. So essentially on this protocol, we were able to enroll 158 patients uh, across all different histologies. Of course, the most common being papillary kidney cancer. Uh, when we looked at kind of an all-comer sort of standpoint, we saw an objective response rate of almost 50%. Um, and then for a progression-free survival of almost 18 months. Um, so certainly very, very exciting uh, efficacy sort of data. Uh, we even broke it down by histologies. In the past, we always felt that chromophobe would not be responsive to any of the immune checkpoint inhibitors. We actually saw a good chunk of 23% having an objective response in that setting. That's great, that's awesome. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. I think mm. kind of building on your prior work yeah. with uh, Nevo Cabo, mm. um, designing the study with, you know, the cohort of just papillary and classified on uh, translocation and then kind of the mm -hmm. chromophobes as a separate subset. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like we, by looking at a larger patient yeah. population, we were able to see a little bit of an effect Yeah, there. definitely. So in previously, like we had run a single center uh, investigator initiated trial of cabazantin plus nivolumab. So that's also within the SNCCN guidelines. Um, and we initially for that study, um, we saw about a 48% uh, objective response rate in the class unclassified papillary um, and translocation cohort. However, within the chromophobe cohort, we actually had to close that early due to the fact that we didn't really see a clear efficacy sort of signal. And kind of in the landscape of everything that was happening, we had actually decided that uh, we wouldn't pursue that further yeah. um, and really focused on kind of the outcomes for uh, the papillary patients. Yeah, that's really wonderful. I think too, you know, what I was really impressed with the data too was the PFS. Yeah. The PFS was greater than a year for these yeah. patients with, you know, uh, PEM, uh, for uh, Lem 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I think that it's very exciting. I mean, you know, certainly we can't do any sort of cross trial comparisons. The, the entry cohorts are just so, so diverse between all the studies, but at least numerically, I mean, this is really the longest PFS that we've been able to see. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's really amazing that we're suddenly seeing like an 18 month median PFS yeah. for, you know, non clear cell. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think, um, are you guys all planning additional sort of uh, biomarker mm -hmm. work to yeah. kind of try to tease out sort of what's driving yeah, these Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that we're very excited about these results. I think that we have a unique opportunity here to really delve deep into kind of the biomarker analyses. Um, I mean, this is an unprecedented number of patients that we can get on. I mean, even for chromophobe, historically we've had only a handful. We've had, you know, more than 20 that, you know, could potentially let us understand biology. I think that this is a unique sort of starting point and, you know, with that correlative biomarker analysis, hopefully um, we can start stratifying patients a little bit more, thinking about more tailored approaches, yeah. um, you know, for the non-clear cell, um, you know, set of patients. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. Yeah. Like p patients with non-clear cell yeah. RCC are truly an unmet need. We need better trials. Yeah. We need better drugs for them. So thank you for the work. Yeah. I think it really adds to the literature of how we better treat patients with non-clear cell RCC. So yeah, thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.